Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andy. I am a family nurse practitioner. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about a trending topic that is going on right now on social media about nurse practitioners quitting their job, why they are quitting and what you should do if you are a new nurse practitioner, a nurse practitioner student or you're thinking of going back to school to become a nurse practitioner. So if you're interested, keep watching. Alright guys, so when I was doing my research for this topic, I narrowed down four main reasons why um, people were quitting, the most common reason why they were quitting, and then I will talk about my tips for you on what to do when you're looking for a job or you're thinking of going back to school. So I made a little note just so that I will remember what I am talking about just so you know when you see me looking down at my computer. The four main common reasons why people are quitting their nurse practitioner positions are number one, the schedule, number two, the salary or the pay, Number three, the kind of practice that they are working in or they were working at. And number four, the general frustration with the healthcare system. So let's start with number one. When you become a nurse practitioner, the schedule changes, especially if you were a nurse that was working like um, three shifts a week, which is a very common um a very common schedule for nurses in hospitals. You do three shifts a week, seven to seven. Um, whether it's night shifts or day shifts, you're doing three. And then you have the rest of the week or the rest of the days for you to do whatever you want to do. Unfortunately, with nurse practitioner um, schedule, the most common um, schedule that you will find, especially if you're going to be working in primary care, is the... Um, common standard schedule which is nine to five now if you do find a job in urgent care it is very possible or very likely for you to get a job that is three days a week because most urgent cares are open eight to eight so you'll be able to still continue your three days a week but if you find yourself in primary care it is very very common that you're going to um, do a nine to five schedule, which can be a little bit challenging to most people when um, if they were already used to doing three days a week to so the pay and salary. So as a nurse, we all know that as a nurse, we, if you're doing um, any kind of overtime that you're able to get paid for your overtime. Most of the nurse practitioners, a job are salaried. So whatever you get paid, it doesn't matter whatever you are scheduled to be paid. It doesn't matter if you work 10 hours, 12 hours, you're still going to get the same amount of money. So there's no extra pay. So you are essentially working the extra hours for free. The third common reason is the practice where people work. If you work in a primary care settings, and especially if it's a private practice and I know this because I have had this experience I am going to link up my nurse practitioner story about my job search um, up here so if you haven't watched that I will encourage you to take to check it out it will give you some encouragement because I did go through this so the problem is when you work for a private practice which is most of the videos that I've watched it's that's the most common reason why people are quitting because when you work for a private practice so essentially a doctor owns this clinic honey they hire you as a nurse practitioner so that you can come do the job for them unfortunately i'm going to be honest i'm going to be raw that is the truth they hire you so that you can do the heavy lifting for them and they can chill like i said my story of my np job my very first job was with um a private practice it was owned by a doctor it wasn't a good experience i had to bring work home so even when i came home if i didn't finish my notes she will be sending me messages about not finishing my notes she will be sending me messages about errors that you make when you're charting it was just it was very very overwhelming you would be required to come in see a certain amount of patients and it was 
no insurance e was not a good experience at all the number four reason is frustration with the healthcare system the healthcare system right now it's not a very good one it doesn't favor everybody which is one of the reason one of the things that i personally go through because i work in a in an fqhc which is a federal a federally qualified healthcare centers which means we see everybody people that have insurance people that don't have insurance self-pay everything medicare medicaid we see everybody and sometimes it can be a little bit not a little bit it can be very very frustrating frustrating especially with your patients that do not have insurance and you're trying to get them to get the right care that they need or people that don't have insurance and they need to see a specialist i go through this um but um, it's a little bit better for me, which I'm going to talk about my job a little bit for you guys so that you will understand um, a little bit why I love my job. Um, um, they have a lot of things set in place for people that don't have insurance to get help, but there are still some people that for some reason don't qualify either because they are living with someone and one of the requirements to get free health care is bringing in like your paycheck and stuff to so that they can get you to they submit it to the specialist so that they can get you through the state to see the specialist unfortunately for some people the people that they are living with don't want to share their paycheck pay stops with other people so they end up not being able to provide that document which then makes them ineligible for to get into that program where they can be helped especially with children i see a lot of kids i do paid i do family humans health everything so it can be a bit frustrating and if you're someone that really really cares about your patients that can get to you now let me talk a little bit about my job like i said um the place that i was working before it was very frustrating i had to take um, work home when I started working at my current job I came in as a contract staff and I actually got more training because I had been at my other job for like six months um, or so before COVID hit and of course when COVID hit I was um, put on furlough, furlough um, because she said she just could not afford um, to pay me well because of the whole thing that was happening. When I went back to work for her when everything was lifted up a little bit, I became a medical assistant, the provider, I did everything. So I would I would room the patient when they first come in. So I would triage the patient, I would do the vital signs, I will give the baby because it was a pediatric clinic. So if they needed the shots, I will give the vaccines. I was everything and it was just too much. When I tell you, you get used. I was being used and then you still have to do your documentation then she added the fact that I had to call patients a day before the appointment to remind them of the appointment and put in some orders and order the um, because with the COVID she, we weren't exchanging papers so she had laid off the MS so she was making us as NPs call the patient send the form electronically to the to the patient's family to make sure that they sign it before the appointment i was like it was just i i could not do it i didn't have any options because that was my only job at that time and you know how what everybody says would they say take the first job that you get that was one of one of the problems that i i had um so that was like my first official job and i was just going through it so i started looking for a job in my current job now someone a friend of mine um they had reached out to a friend of mine telling them that they are hiring and she reached out to me saying hey i got this job um saying that they are hiring because i had shared my frustrations with her so she said if you are interested um so i reached out to the um, recruiter and of course, unfortunately, I did not have two years of experience, which is another problem. Everyone, everybody wants you to be experienced before they hire you. So when you get these jobs that want to hire you as a new grad, they use you. Okay. So 
I so I didn't have the two years experience. So what they basically did was they hired me for their COVID units, and it was a contract job. It was supposed to be a three months job, and I prayed about it, and I took the job, hoping that it would be something that would then change to permanent. But the good thing about it was when I went in, my direct director at that time was a very, very nice person and actually trained me more than my original first job, like my full-time job. So um, they took me, She, I, I had expressed my um, interest of becoming a full-time employee. So they were like, okay, cool. Anytime I had a little bit of slowdown on my schedule where I wasn't, it wasn't a lot of COVID patients coming in. Um, they would take me upstairs to the different parts. I would work with um, the OBGYNs because like I said, is a, this is a FQHC facility. So they have um, mental health, so behavioral health, OBGYN, dental, we have everything, then primary care. So they will put me with primary care doctors, NPs for me to shadow them. Then, and meanwhile, I was still under contract. I was just a contract staff. I look at how they do paths. I will look at how they place next plans and stuff like that. So I was learning while I was on contract. So by the time my contract was almost done, they had sent me up with an interview. So I basically just transitioned from contract to a full-time employee and I was so happy. Another good thing with my job is that we have something called admin time so you have eight hours a week for you to just focus on your paperwork so they give you four hours a day two days four hours each so you can choose to do your admin in the morning and see patients in the evening or do um, see patients in the morning and do your admin time in the evening, which really, really, really helped me with um, work-life balance. I'm able to take care of my kids because I can work and then the rest of my four hours, I will focus on sending refills, um, filling out forms for patients and reviewing my labs, which was something that I do not have at my other job. There was no admin time, but you were expected to make sure that all your notes are signed. Basically, she wanted you signing all your notes within three days and that was tough. Um, with my job right now, you are expected to see 24 patients a day, but it being an FQHC, most patients don't show up. So I don't even stress myself about the numbers because most patients don't show, show up. The most you will see, it's probably like 20 or 18 patients a day. Um, so, for me, coming from where I came from, I am cool with that. Now, if you talk to someone else, it might be a whole issue. They might tell you, uh, uh I can't do that. But for me, where I came from, which was really rough, it was not, when I tell you it was not a good experience, it was not a good experience. To where I am now, where I get to have admin times, I get to have vacation time, lots of vacation time where I can just take off, sick time, good health insurance. I ain't got no complaints, okay? I thank God. Try to look for a job. I know it's not easy, but if you are able to, make sure you get a job at a bigger facility, which is more um, set. They have so my job is a is um has has union so any changes has to go through the union we have union rep a, a nurse practitioner very amazing nurse practitioner we get three thousand dollars a year for um for ca ceu okay for you to get your cme compared to my old job which was five hundred dollars i know i know so Try to find a job at a bigger facility. So whether it's like related to a hospital or it's an FQHC. And the good thing about my job is that they pay back your student loans. So look for an FQHC, but you have to sign a contract to work for them for two years or three years, depending on the kind of contract that you sign. So I am currently debt free, student loan free. Don't have any student loans. I love my job. So, hey, 
<laughs> who am I to complain? And when you and are negotiating your contract, make sure that they put in admin time because when I tell you, when you see patients back to back to back to back to back, it can be really hard to get caught up. So make sure that you are scheduled at an admin time where you get to sit down and sign off your notes, send your refills, fill out forms because not only that you'll get like 500 forms, you get um, disability forms from your patients. It's a lot. So you need time to actually do those things. If you're an NP student or you are um, thinking of going um, back to school to become an NP, I have to be real with you. It is hard to find a job. It took me about six months to find my job and you get a lot, a lot, a lot of no's before you get a job. So you got to put that at the back of your mind. I know people that are still haven't found a job yet and we graduated together or people that graduated before me and still haven't found a job yet. So it is hard to find a job. Secondly, it is hard to find a good job when you're a new grad. Um, I was lucky that COVID hit and I was able to slip in through the cracks to my new job. I'm, I'm glad, you know, I'm lucky that, you know, I'm not a bad person. So when I started working there, I loved them. They loved me. It was an easy transition. It's easy for me to say yes, because my boss was really nice. I could call him at any time, non-judgmental, answer any question that I had compared to my former boss, which used to make me feel really stupid when I asked questions. So that was another thing that encouraged me. They put me through um, training to be able to insert next plan on. Um, you know, I'm currently doing hepatitis C, share the cure, which I am vlogging. You guys will see that. Um, share the cure uh, treatment for hepatitis C. I am eligible to take in, um, HIV course to get certified as an HIV um, treatment provider and they would pay for it. So it is up to me to take that exam. So I'm just doing things one at a time. So they are very open and then they see me, the, you know, all of those things. Those are the things you want to consider when you're looking for a job. But I just want to say, don't be discouraged. Don't be... Um, frustrated it is true that all these things are happening it is something that you should keep at the back of your head at the back of your mind make sure that it is something that you want to pursue and you have a plan b if that's what you're if you're if you really love doing um being an np or wanting to be an np i wanted more power to be able to do things for my patients um i love my patients but bedside wasn't really my thing um so i love the interactions with my patients and i did not want to lose that which is why i took the np route and i did family because i wanted to be able to see children and i wanted to be able to see um older people so i wanted to have that broad um you know that covering for me to be able to do different things to be able to learn anyway so at my job i'm able to do we do preps we do hiv um treatments we do again women's health everything so i do everything so i can if i were to leave my job right now i can walk I can work anyway. So that is something you should also consider when you're looking for a job. Don't be discouraged if it's something that you really want to do. I would say go ahead and do it, but make sure you keep put your plans in place so that you'll be able to do it successfully. All right, y'all, it's been real. I hope that this video was somewhat helpful for you um don't forget to like share subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet leave comments tips anything that you will want me to answer and until my next video bye